Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart and welcome to our D&D December Marathon videos. Like last year, we'll be looking at a new character every single day of the month of December leading up to Christmas Day. Now, I must confess, originally I wanted to stream every day in December as well. Back in September, I had a subathon and it was a complete success. We had a bunch of time built up and I planned to serve all that time out in December. However, we recently bought a house. Now, it's a gorgeous house, but unfortunately, and I, I cannot show it to you yet, because as of the time of this publishing, we are either closing or moving, which means all of my December time is taken from me. So, you know, I'm not asking for much, but liking and sharing these videos this month will be a lifesaver for us. You guys know I hate call to actions, and I usually have Cinema Freak write these for me, but uh, this is just a sincere, please watch the videos. Also, if I timed this right, nearly all of our December videos are done ahead of time and with no advertisements. That's right, you can watch every single video I produce this month ahead of schedule by becoming a channel member, Twitch subscriber, or patron. Meaning for five bucks, you can watch 25 videos ahead of time. This month has been a hell of a lot of work and I'm trying to get one last uh, special Christmas present done for everyone, but at the moment, I'm not certain if it's gonna happen. Thank you everybody and enjoy the video. Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart and welcome to the highly, highly requested series that I've finally had time to look at. Over the course of this D&D &D December, we'll be looking at three of the most highly requested characters from the hit AMC series, Breaking Bad. The first one, however, will be Jesse Bruce Pinkman and he was born in September 24th, 1984 to an upper middle class family in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Growing up, Jesse attended J.P. Wynn Middle School where he fell in with a bad crowd and became a very poor performing student. In high school, he was kicked out of his parents' home due to his drug problems and went to live with his aunt. After she passed away from lung cancer, she left the house to him. Eventually, Jesse graduated from high school and went on to become a drug dealer, cooking a brand of meth mixed with chili powder under the alias of Captain Cook. Jesse starts the series as a criminal, but not a malicious one. He talks a big game, but is very hesitant and resort to violence, more willing to smooth things out with trash talking or diplomacy. The prospect of killing someone is especially unnerving, even to people who may deserve it. He also has a soft spot for kids, and he takes it very personal when one is harmed or in danger anywhere near him. Jesse starts the series as a very classic chaotic neutral, and I don't think there's much argument that could be had there. And with that out of the way, let's go. And then we're gonna clean up every possible source of contamination, and only then we cook. Pinkman? The first thing we see in the series is Jesse bailing on his first meth cooking partner, Emilio, chaotic neutral. Either that, or I turn you in. Walter then blackmails him into working together, to which Jesse agrees, lawful neutral. Buy the RV. We start tomorrow. Jesse takes Walt's money and instead of investing in the RV like he was supposed to, spends it on strippers, but then when he realizes he doesn't have anything left to get it, he lets Combo take him to a place that he has no idea about and then pretty much steals an RV. You can argue Jesse doesn't know that it's stealing, but considering he isn't stupid and he drives off like a bat out of hell, this is absolutely neutral evil. Oh yeah, work it. Baby, work it. He then drives out to the desert with Mr. White and then they cook their first batch. I'm gonna count this as part of the earlier deal so no additional alignment ding for cooking this meth. Where did you get this? Jesse takes the meth they make to a buyer called Crazy Eight, who just so happens to be Emilio's cousin. They're claiming that Jesse sold Emilio out to the DEA. He actually didn't. Crazy Eight was actually the snitch. Jesse folds like a cheap paper plate at your dad's cookout and tells Crazy Eight everything about Walt and his family. Selling out your partner for your own safety is neutral evil. <laughs> Run, Mr. White, run! I mean, I guess he took the time to say that, so sure, why not? It's a long video. Neutral good. That's two out of three. After the events of episode one, Walt and Jesse decide to flip a coin on who has to dispose of Emilio's body and who has to kill Crazy Eight. Jesse won the coin toss to dispose of the body. Rather than following Walt's instructions and using plastic to melt the body, Jesse instead uses his bathtub, which results in this. After Mr. White helps Jesse clean up the body, Jesse refuses to help with Crazy Eight and buggers off to have sex with a prostitute, chaotic neutral. Hey, Mom. Jesse continues his guilt-filled bender and flees to his parents' house, chaotic neutral. Seriously, I got dudes that would give their left nut for a little more. 
After earning a bunch of money and selling the meth they made, Jesse approaches Mr. White to see if they want to cook more. Mr. White is rude, so Jesse hands him the money in his own special way. I'll also just say chaotic neutral. What do you know about that? Nothing. He spends time with his parents until they find a weed in one of the bedrooms. They assume it's Jesse's and kick him out of the house. Turns out it belonged to his little brother and he covered for him. Good guy, Jesse. Chaotic good. Okay. We're in business. Once he gets kicked out of his house, Jesse starts looking for a job and meets up with a friend who can get him meth ingredients. Jesse starts cooking again, but is constantly unsatisfied with his yield and keeps throwing it away. This eventually culminates in a fight with his friend where Jesse abandons him in the middle of the desert. This episode ends with him teaming up with Mr. White again. Chaotic neutral for basically recooking meth a bunch of times. And then chaotic evil for leaving his friend out there. Jesse spends most of this episode selling drugs. He does well, but is not making enough money for them fast enough, so they go to a distributor called Tuco. He tries to sell his meth, but the deal goes badly. Since Jesse is doing his best to make a business transaction go as smoothly as possible, this is pretty lawful neutral. 17 and a half. Minus and a half for wasting my time. In episode seven, Mr. White and Jesse sell a pound of meth to Tuco, but they are short. Mr. White yeah, changes science. up the formula and method from pseudomedrin to methylamine so that they can cook a lot more meth. Jesse basically is following Mr. White's instructions this episode. Lawful neutral for shopping and lawful evil for stealing the methylamine. The deal with Tuco goes south when he beats the shit out of his cousin? for speaking out of turn. Jesse bides a gun to shoot him, and this doesn't work out due to a series of misunderstandings. The episode ends with both Jesse and Mr. White on a business end of a gun heading to a hideout. What secret ingredient? Chili powder. Episode two is basically a game of cat and mouse as the two try to poison Tuco. Jesse was the one who really tried to convince Tuco to take a hit of the rice and disguised as other drugs. Unfortunately, he took it too far and flubbed it. So I'll call this chaotic neutral. It eventually ends with the two stealing Tuco's guns. Jesse shoots him once in the stomach and they leave. Chaotic neutral. Mr. White comes up with a plan for Jesse to get a prostitute to cover for him. Jesse follows the plan to the T, and even though it costs him all his drug money, lawful neutral. You cannot be serious! Hey, someone took your bike, man. Jesse, without any money or contacts, willing to help him out, wanders the street until he finds the RV. He even gets kicked out of his house. He tries to get it back, but the lot owner isn't letting him have it back, so Jesse just steals it. He eventually heads to Mr. White's house and asks him for money since the police stole his. They get into a fight, but eventually reach an understanding. Let's give the poor boy one chaotic neutral and call it a day. Like I said, my word is my bond. Jesse really puts in the work this episode. He gets a new apartment, figures out a good place to keep the RV, and establishes distribution methods for their business. All in all, lawful neutral. I want you to handle it. In the last episode, one of Jesse and Mr. White's drug dealers got mugged. So on Mr. White's orders, Jesse finds the two who took it and starts beating them for their money back. The two addicts then strike a deal with him that if they can get the ATM open that they stole, that they would repay him, and then some. They eventually get the money out, and Jesse takes his share. This is lawful evil. However, during this episode, Jesse also encountered the crackhead's kid and took care of him throughout the day and tried to, well, I guess advise the parents on how to best take care of him. The scene culminates showing off the best of Jesse where he removes the kid from the scene of the crime. He then calls 911, and this is a Nat 20 scene. A uh, great episode. I still have a hard time watching it, and I mean that in the best way. Lawful evil for beating the shit out of the guys, and chaotic good for taking care of their kid. Are you gonna get back up on that horse? After the events of the last episode, Jesse goes in for a bit of depression spiral that Mr. White has to pull him out of. The episode ends with him looking up a big titty goth girlfriend next door. Chaotic neutral. Police, you're under arrest. Get on the ground. Badger, one of their drug dealers, gets busted, and the best advice they are given is to kill him in prison. Obviously, Jesse and Mr. White refuse to do this, so they hire a lawyer, Saul Goodman, in order to formulate a way to get him out of prison and to make sure that they don't get implicated. They come up with a crazy scheme and hire a professional fall guy, and everyone leaves relatively happily. Weirdly enough, I'm calling it lawful good. I know. Our methylamine. It's going bad. 
Mr. White calls Jesse up one day to tell him that their batch of methylamine is going bad and they have to cook. Jesse spends the next four days with Mr. White cooking meth. They cook a massive batch, but hijinks ensue. They get out of it and Jesse learns that Mr. White is dying faster than they expected. Jesse is actually very supportive and sympathetic to Mr. White this episode and eventually swears that Walt's family will get their fair share of the money from the meth that they cooked. Lawful good. Jesse's friend and dealer combo gets shot on the street and Jesse doesn't take it well. He spends the next couple of episodes getting high and hanging out with Jane. Within this time, Walt finds a drug dealer named Gus to buy all their meth. If I gave you that money, you would be dead inside of a week. After the deal with Gus, Jesse goes to get his half million from Mr. White, but he refuses since he spent that time getting high with Jane. Jesse accepts this and continues to go get high with her. She learns about the money from him and blackmails Mr. White into giving them his half. Since Jesse is just passively letting this happen, I'm going to say neutral. After Jane's death, Jesse goes on a bender that Mr. White has to take him out of and get him into rehab. Jesse accepts this and goes to rehab for a time. Chaotic neutral. Just thought some allowance was in order once I heard about the meth lab. He then blackmails his own parents into selling his old house back to him. Lawful evil. Super careful my amounts and watch the numbers every step of the way. So what do you think? Jesse then gets back into cooking and considers himself the bad guy, so he starts passing out free samples of his new meth to not only vulnerable people, but he strikes a deal with Gus, the guy who brought the last batch for a half million, to sell more to him. Since Jesse is admittedly playing bad guy and the fact that he's kind of preying on people directly instead of just making stuff, I'm going to give this another easy, lawful evil, but feel free to disagree with me and call it lawful neutral. 10% of all future profits from his solo venture money you get paid for walking down to the mailbox. Jesse gets really pissed off once he learns that Gus paid Mr. Wife half of the money of the meth that he sold to them. Mr. Wife pays him and tells him that he's going to work for Gus and that he's cutting him out. Jesse gets pissed and throws rocks on his car. Technically chaotic evil. He's here. Mr. White's brother-in-law, Hank, who is an officer of the DEA, discovers the existence of the RV. Mr. White, unable to contact Jesse for fear of his phone and house being bugged, commandeers the vehicle to get it destroyed. Jesse races after it, leading Hank to the location. Mr. White comes up with a plan that Jesse follows along with, fo involving a fake phone call that tells Hank that his wife was sent to the hospital. This enrages Hank so much that he beats the shit out of poor Jesse, who has now taken his, like, what, 16th beating throughout the show? Chaotic neutral. I will own him when this is over. After getting the shit kicked out of him, Jesse planned to sue Hank for everything he's worth, until Mr. White talked him out of it by offering him a position with Gus. Jesse takes the job and waits in the lab to cook, but Mr. White is stuck at the hospital supporting his family for Hank. Lawful neutral. Why are you purposely giving him free meth? Jesse realizes just how little of a cut they are getting for selling all the meth that they're making, so he steals about a pound. He then hires his friend to head to the 12-step program that he's attending in order to sell to drug addicts. This is so reprehensible that even his friends feel too shitty to sell them, but he reprimands them and tries to do it himself. Neutral evil. Okay, Buck is gonna go play in his room while the big people talk. Jesse discovers that the girl from his 12-step program has a kid, so he gives up selling drugs to her. He also discovers that her kid brother was also the one who shot and killed Combo from the last season, and is currently being used as a drug mule for Gus's gang. He planned to assassinate them, but Mr. White intervened once he found out. They tried to force him back out, but he insisted that they stop using kids in their operations. Gus agreed, and that would have been the end of it, but the same gangsters then killed the boy. Jesse then gets high and attempts to take matters into his own hands before Mr. White handles the job for him. Chaotic good for attempting to avenge the kid. Run. I got my old job back. At least until they kill me and Gale takes over. After Mr. White kills the drug dealers, Jesse goes into hiding and operates in the shadows for a while and finds out where Gale lives. Mr. White plans to go kill him, but gets caught and tells Jesse. Jesse quickly runs to Gale's home and kills him to protect Mr. White. Chaotic good. Drive. After being captured by Victor and Michael, Jesse simply accepts his fate. After Victor's death, Jesse helps clean up and enjoys understanding where they are with Gus. Neutral. What's up with the pie, man? He ain't cut. It's interesting to see how Jesse and Mr. White both handle stress. Check out Mr. White in two weeks. While Mr. White practices learning to defend himself, Jesse buries himself in drugs and beaches. This bender continues into episode three as Jesse literally starts throwing his money around. Chaotic neutral. Tell me now exactly what is going on. 
Jesse's with me today, so what you need to do is to go back to your lab and get on with the cook. You're Mike babysits Jesse for the full day. He's bored and eventually pesters Mike into a quick snap. But at the end of the day, they were about to get jumped, but Jesse protects the car and the drop. Bobble neutral. Just like you wanted. The kid's a hero. Unbeknownst to him, this was a setup from Gus. You may know this whole P.I. sit in the car business, but I know meth heads. Once Jesse becomes a hero, he helps Mike out with various chores. He finds fulfillment in this and gets to flex his people skills and help the business. Lawful neutral. Drop the sales pitch. I'll do it. Later, Mr. White approaches Jesse and reminds him of Gus's sins and how he is responsible for multiple people's death. Jesse agrees to kill Gus on the first chance he gets and accepts ricin for Mr. White. Opportunities do arise at peace talks, but Jesse's nerves get the better of him and he stands guard of Gus. Neutral. Why I'm here in the first place is to sell you meth. Racked with guilt and doubt, Jesse goes to a group therapy and talks about killing Gale in code. He's really only seeking to punish himself in this chaotic neutral. So, um, you'll thank Jesse again from both of us. You got it. Jesse has set it up that his ex will receive free money for him for the foreseeable future. Neutral good. Why she's gonna tell me to Shut my mouth if I get busted. He ain't gonna set up no meeting. Well, then insist on it, damn it! During this time, Hank has recruited Mr. White into helping him look into Gus. Mr. White panics and asks Jesse to kill Gus sooner, and Jesse just kind of refuses. Neutral. Where's this all going? Elsewhere. Now that Hank is on to Gus, Jesse helps prepare the farm for inspection by scrubbing it clean, narrowly in avoiding an assassination attempt and, and having Mr. dinner White. with Gus. Lawful neutral. How did you know I was at his house last night? After dinner with Gus, Jesse seeks advice from Mr. White, who bugged his car. They get into a fight and end on bad terms. Jesse tells Mr. White to get out, and their friendship is permanently ruined. Chaotic neutral. Don't you have standards? I mean, this place is disgusting. All right, we're going to scour every vat, every tank, every cook surface. And then we're going to clean up every possible source of contamination. And only then, we cook. Comprende? Jesse heads to Mexico with Gus and begins to teach them how to cook their blue sky. At first, he's overwhelmed, but quickly takes charge and gets a really great Nat 20 Intimidate check. He cooks and impresses the cartel, but is shocked when he is told that he will be staying with them. Lawful neutral. That Nat 20 scene is followed by another one as Jesse, Mike, and Gus eliminate the cartel. Check out on the Gus video for more details. Jesse defends his co-worker and helps Mike into a makeshift hospital and helps to heal him. Showing loyalty and a value of human life, I know sounds weird, but is lawful good. Don't kill him. You know that won't work. Then you got a problem. I'm going to give him one more ding as well for defending Mr. White against Gus. Even when Mr. White shows up at his house, Jesse refuses to cooperate and keeps Mr. White alive. Do you understand now? Do you see why this can't continue? You know, I get it. The guy is a complete and total dick, but I can't. I'm not signing off. Jesse is like a reverse Judas, man. Holy shit. Not once, not twice, but three whole times he has protected Mr. White. Give the man another lawful good. I'm thinking rock may have been poison, okay? Or just, or just stuff, this stuff called ricin. And while the whole situation with Mr. White is happening, Brock gets suspiciously sick, and Jesse thinks it's a ricin from the cigarette earlier. He tells the hospital what he thinks it is, and then confronts Mr. White about it, who convinced him that Gus is using Brock to get to him. Lawful good. It concerns Brock Cantillo in a statement you made to his mother. How about you come with us? In the final episode of season four, Jesse conspires with Mr. White to kill Gus. However, because of the Rison suspicion, he is picked up by the Albuquerque police and then held in custody for most of the episode. He is then released and then captured by goons and then freed by Mr. White. They then destroy the lab and leave Gus's empire behind. Lawful neutral. 
Guys, I have a confession to make. I'm going to be splitting this Jesse video up into two parts. This video is only going to be covering seasons one through four, and we will discuss season five and El Camino at the end of the month. We will also be doing this with Walter White as well. Season five is such a different animal from seasons one through four that I thought it best to analyze these characters before and after their shift in power. Season one through four, Jesse is much different from season five, Jesse. And the first four seasons, Jesse is a disorganized and confused person, which makes sense considering his age and background. Jesse comes from a wealthy family that has had their own plans for him, but that didn't sit well with him. Jesse, like many millennials and Gen X, want to be happy and successful, but have no idea how to achieve either of those things. Can relate. Jesse's big flaw, as we will talk about in other videos, is the sin of sloth. He is lazy, directionless, and doesn't know what to do. One thing that is consistent with Jesse, however, is his strong sense of justice and loyalty. Jesse is loyal to those that he cares about, including his friends, Walt, and at times, Gus Fring. He hates seeing the strong bully of the week, but also thinks everyone should have the freedom and choice to make their own decisions, whether it be good or bad. In seasons one through four, Jesse is a man without power attempting to claw his way through a world in to wealth and success without harming anyone else. And on the off chance someone does get hurt, even if they're a bad guy, Jesse takes it real hard. A classic chaotic neutral to the core, and honestly, I kind of have some respect for the guy for wanting to do that. It's admirable to want to take care of your own while doing as little harm as possible. Jesse really wants that omelet, but hates cracking eggs. Next time, however, come back and we're going to take a look at someone who not only makes omelets, but who also owns the chicken, the coop, and the land that they live on. See you guys next week for our next Breaking Bad Guy. And stay tuned tomorrow for the first part of our Isekai Quartet. Thank you to the patrons, and I'll see you all next time.